Well, it's over. What curse? What curse? As we sit here today, I'm happy to be doing Afterburner. Finally, Afterburner, you know what? Guilt-free. Oh, yeah. Less calories, more filling. Afterburner <laughs> from the Grey Eagle Resort and Casino after the Calgary Flames win by a score of six to three over the Arizona Coyotes. Now, I know it's, here's one of those things. This is a big win for the Flames. They needed it. And, yeah, they beat the Coyotes. You know what, though? It was this was the Coyotes at their very best. This Coyotes team had beaten some good teams here in the last month, and I don't think the Flames are in a spot to be overly picky over who they get wins over. Well, and never mind the opponent. Think about the spot this group is in in this game. Down three one, having allowed eight shots and flirting with probably you know twenty five thirty at that point. Um, I think you ha you have to give full marks for sticking with the process and not just throwing your hands up and saying it's happening again. Because I thought mm -hmm. on Philly on Monday, it wasn't dissimilar. They piled up a ton of chances. They didn't get the result. It felt like Philly all over again when you look at that 3-1 mark of the second period. And uh, to, to, to see the final result of 6-3, I think that's probably the biggest takeaway is that they stick with it. Not that they beat Arizona or not that they – they found a way to, you know, stay engaged. But not only do they stick with it, they end up walloping them. And I think it's important for them to, to get the two points here. That 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 loss, if it happened today, down 3-1, having allowed eight shots, feels like a backbreaker. You're talking about you'd be, what, th uh, like two back with two games in it hand? Would, you know, it, it, would, it would be brutal. It would be more of that self-fulfilling prophecy that you can't, that you're losing to, to goaltenders that you should be beating, teams yep. and all that whole thing. So, um I'm very aware that it's Arizona and all of that, but sometimes you need a slump buster and you got to have a feel good game. And as Reddit said, it sucks getting on the plane when you, when you've lost and you feel shitty and all of that. Yeah. They had 13 players with at least a point tonight. So everybody gets on that plane. Thank you to Daniel on our chat on, uh, online here i forgot about the sunglasses definitely wearing the sunglasses yeah, I was after a yeah. uh, after Victory a win shoots. um a lot of things went right and you know what you mentioned the three one i wrote down at the time in my notes say so, okay three one so what are you and yeah. how do you handle it we we've said you're 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 fragile you don't we know that you don't come back from from a deficits after 40 minutes we had talked about that they just could they have yep. not done it um so how did it start? It, the, the power play comes through. They get some depth scoring. Obviously, first goal of the night comes from the fourth line. And Walker Dare. Walker Dare. Walker Dare. Um, Strong stirred the drink tonight, Dean. When this game was close, he was a guy that, you know, he's not going to leave them in ice time, but you noticed him a ton, didn't you? Listen, we've been on the Walker Durr bandwagon for we got to. I don't know what we're doing. We're getting shirts, hats. We got to get something going. But um, the the kid is it's he's infectious. It's hard not to like the way he plays. That that goal that he scores as he cuts to the net. Yeah. There's not a lot of guys that a have the ability to do it, and at, with what nine games or whatever it is under their yeah. belt, yeah. Um, would have the guts or the 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 balls if you want to call it that. But he pulled the. He pulled it off. It's a hell of a goal. Yeah. How don't you like watching this guy play? There's something there. And we all like the speed and the energy that we saw from the moment he got into this lineup for the first time, Dino. But when you're starting to see some finish and the playmaking and the poise where he strips that puck, cuts out front, and then rather than just try to tuck it right on, like, ah, I got to get a chance, it's slide it back to Luch. He scores. And then the finish on the break, I mean – it's kind of what they've been missing in a way. And in, 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 when that fourth line looks pedestrian, it's it's big, grindy bodies that they can't really affect the pace. And if they're not up against the wall, eh. But now with Dewar, it's like, oh, yeah, okay. There's You can start getting some momentum from that fourth line. And, you know, that's that's it sounds like a small piece if he's your 12th forward. But it's a, it's a big add to this group tonight. I'm not even going to waste any time. Mandeep, okay. get ready. Mandeep, Mandeep get ready because here it comes. It's time for the BK... The, the BK liquor, Beaufort liquor, cheers of the game. I'm going with what I had it before the uh, before he even scored the goal. Yeah. I was makes it. And again, is it is it a is it a 
the, the niftiest assist you've ever seen. But still, the kid walks out of the corner. He knows what he's doing. He's dropping that pass to uh, to Lucic on yeah. that opening goal. And beyond that, he's in the corners and he's digging and scraping. And then he scores that goal. He is getting my cheers of the game for BK Beaufort Liquor. Walker Durr! The pride of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Walker Durr. It's funny because we cheers. were talking about uh, during the game. They have had some highly sought after college free agents and guys who are like, oh, just wait. You know, this Kenny Morrison could be a player. Oh, man, or, yeah. or even, you know, like Connor Mackey. Apparently, there was every team in the league at least flirted and made some sort of an expression of interest. Like, hey, you're going to get an entry level. We'll give you one. But this was one that came with no fanfare. And I think that speaks to the player that he's improved a ton since showing up in the organization. But secondly, also to just how much of a crapshoot the college free agent game can be. But it's nice to see them find a guy like this. And I, I, I don't want to see that lineup without him. I if don't. he looks anything like we've seen him over, what, five games now this year? This is becoming a decent sample size. Yeah, and we had said that before the All-Star break, that you knew Pelche was going to go down. He knew that Walker Dare was going to go down. But get him back up. Get him back up. And I don't know if it's injuries, you know, the, the stone IR that makes room for, for him to get back in. But this guy just should not be yeah. should not be leaving the lineup. No, and, and you know what? Like if you need a Richie in a series, if someone's hurt, you know what you're getting. And if you need I, I don't know, we know as much what we're getting from Adam Rizichka because we saw him flash a really offensive side when he was in the top nine, and then he just goes without noticing him when he plays on that fourth line, and you're like, Oh, look at his line mates. But here's a guy, no matter who's lined up next to him, you just see him impacting the game. And that's what they need. Uh, this team, too many nights, has not, you know, been invested. And, you know, th- this is a guy I don't worry about that from. And, you know, he's not the only young guy that's come and pushed the needle. I'll give an honorable mention for the toast of the game for BK Beaufort Liquor to Jacob Pelche. It, it kind of happened later in this contest. I mean, his, his goal stands as the winner. But, you know, there's another rookie that's added. And remember how clunky this lineup was when they had no one to put in that top nine next to Kadri and Huberto. He's not just fit in. He's been the best player on that line a lot of nights. And tonight he comes away with a goal and an assist. Not on light walker. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, Dewar gets the toast. But, I mean, you know, who? Is, there's an extra glass of champagne. All Jacob, right. have a sip, yeah, would you? Yeah. you? like bubbles? So, are you, so he's getting your honorable mention? Honorable mention. I, I'm, I'm not going to say walker is not top of my list, but I thought. Are you co- is it a two for walker Deer? It's two for It's Deer. a two-banger for walker Deer. It's another Deer. Cheers of the game. <laughs> Presented by BK Beaufort Liquor, located on the Trans Canada, right across from Windsport, beside the McDonald's. Stop in, stock up on your way out to the mountains. Say hi to Mandeep. Say hi to the family. Family owned, proud to be family owned, and run here in the city of Calgary. Find them on uh, on your Twitter at BK Liquor, on Instagram at BK Beaufort Liquor, and of course at their location on the west edge of the city. It's BK Beaufort. Yeah, head to the mountains. You got to grab a nice bottle of something. That's Man right. Deep's got you set up the Man whole crew there. Deep. Don't worry about it. Man Deep. The sucky mitts can yeah. pick out a nice I bottle of wine, say, not I, just stick in. That uh, remind me of a young man deep watching that uh, walker. <laughs> but truly, th- at, at three to one, uh, and we were sitting here watching this, and, and I saw the remarks on online, and, yeah. and you had said that this is the most flamesy. Calgary flamesy game of 22, possible, 23. Where, because what were the shots after the first period? Uh, I see 16, 18 to three, 18 to three through 20 scoring chances were 14 to five high dangers, five to two. Like it's so it of the three to, shots, two yeah. of them, which is very flamesy out yeah. shooting the crap out of your opponent. Very flamesy. And yet only a one goal lead, very flamesy. And then sure enough, the first mistake they make penalty wise, it's in the back of that. You're tied in a game where it feels like you needed a second puck for the Yotes to feel it on their stick at all. It was, it was a lopsided effort. If you did anything of some look at the score, and yet there they were down 3-1 at one point. And it was they were down 3-1. Three, three on eight. Yeah. Which, again, you talk with the narrative of goaltending. You can't get a save when you need it. And I don't know if you blame Vladar on goals, but it, it didn't matter. I mean, one went in by his own freaking defense. Tanev shoots one in, yeah. But it, it's Selly's, just... That's a pretty good chance from there. It's just part of the bigger the bigger story. If, if the Flames lost tonight, you, no one would have been, oh, my God, what happened? It would have been... We've seen this. Yeah, this this is just more of the same. And that's kind of to my point where you talk about, okay, they got the win against Arizona. What's what, Who's the opponent? Like, no, no, no. You know what? This one this one broke the script a little. Because yeah. we all saw that this game end in a loss for this team in prior iterations, whether that's Detroit or Ottawa or, you know, St. Louis where they blow a lead, um, Philly on Monday. Like, you've seen games where it's like, guys, if you just finish your chances, this isn't close. 
and oh, someone blows a tire, odd man rush, and you're losing in a game you've had the puck most of the night. And I'm not here to tell you this is a real good team, but the stat of the day, and we heard it on the broadcast, a 609 points percentage against playoff teams this year, 500 dead even, including loser points. Like that's that's bad. It's NHL 500. It's not real 500 against teams out of the playoffs. They're above 500 with the win over Arizona tonight. This one busted the script. And the power play gets them going. They're down three to one. The power play has not been good. They've been in that bottom tier of the league yep. the entire season. Down three to one, power play, and it happened quick. Lindholm wins the faceoff. It gets over to the wing. He goes to the front of the net yep. and then puts it into, into the top shelf to make it three to two. You could kind of you could kind of feel it. They're, the power play, what, three for five tonight? Yes, that's right, because Backlund gets one late from Pelche. That makes it three for five, and that's – I mean, we talk about what the difference one or two saves or one or two power play goals can make. I mean, geez, it's, it's scary if the power play's not going tonight. Yeah. And of note with the power play, we'd seen coming out of the all-star break, Kirk Muller going with these new units where they had Pelche, Kadri, Kubro, that line sticking together as a unit. They go back to the old uh, units, which is, makes sense. It wasn't working. The ones before the break weren't, but at least the personnel made sense. So it's Huberto, Kadri, to Foley, Lindholm, Anderson, your top unit. That's what they had before the All-Star break. They go back to those tonight, and that leaves the second unit with Dubé, Manjapani, Helche, Backlund, and Hannafin. Two points for Pelche and the man who vanished. Second unit. And I guess we've kind of talked about it, and Red, Red has talked about it on the other show, that sometimes just having new faces and youthful youth in the lineup it becomes infectious. Yeah. And not to say because Walker Durr scored that all of a sudden Toffoli was going to play. And I want to talk about Toffoli in a bit. But how about Jacob Pelche? Because he has looked more and more comfortable. He gets a goal and an assist. Now the goal goes off his pants. And then <laughs> Is, I thought he had the stick there. Well, I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, I mean, the angle's weird because he's got a stick way in front yeah, of him. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, Either way. They'll count. It's where you got to be. Right? Is it how or how many? What is, it's how many. It's how many. It's okay. how many. Yeah. But he looks more and more comfortable. He's making plays and. Again, may, pace, right? hey, maybe two months ago, he wasn't ready. But clearly he's ready now. Yeah. I, I don't feel like this is a guy that has more to prove that this is any kind of a, 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 a test or a stint to see if he can make it. This is the get yourself a place. You're on the team. Yeah. Let's make a let's make a push here, and and get into the postseason. And then who knows what can happen? But it happens. Different guy. I remember Cole Caulfield comes in, yeah. plays for the Habs. He yeah. starts scoring, fits right in. They go all the way to the Cup final. Yeah. Not comparing, but it's just sometimes you can have guys come in, and the game is easier for some at the NHL level because the passes are better, the play is more crisp, and all of that. He just looks. He looks like he belongs to me. Yeah, and honestly, he belongs to that line more than Milan Lucic did. We were screaming, pulling our hairs out for, for like the, what, four to six weeks. We saw Lucic next to Huberto and Kadri. They needed more pace, playmaking, an ability for someone to get open. He, he's brought a lot of elements to that line, and, and by, by all means, not a finished product. But I think the slow cook on him has allowed him to step in, and his baseline's good enough to be there every night. He doesn't have to have a good night to earn a spot on that line. I, I think he's been very consistent for a rookie and probably kudos to the Flames for, for, you know, not having him up a year ago when, you know, people like me were clamoring for it. But he, he looks more polished than a rookie, yeah. doesn't he? To me, he does. And even seeing him making those plays, kind of the, the catch and pass on the power play when he was down below, he and, yeah. he and back then were, were tossing the puck around. Those are confident plays. Yeah. Um, I got I, something on that note if you want. Yeah, no, well, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Look, this team is not in a playoff spot. They're certainly fighting for one. I think they're firmly entrenched as a bubble team. And I think as you get to the deadline, they're now, what, four games away? Um, yeah, four more. Um, that's They're, they're going to be a bubble team at the deadline. And I'm not here to s tell you that the Flames are close to adding a big forward. But we've heard the talk since August. This team is looking to add scoring. This team needs another top nine winger. Buy it or sell it for Derek Newman of Newman Deems Realty and CIR Realty. The Calgary Flames with Walker Dewar and Jacob Pelche added to a group that already had a healthy Adam Rzichka in the rafters and Brett Ritchie shouldn't be shopping for a forward at this point. If there's a need for this group, and I don't even know that you need they, they need to buy anything, but 
I, I just don't see a hole where you're like, you got to go get a guy to plug it. Now, you could improve a guy, but buy it or sell it. They really don't need a forward right now. You can, uh, I mean, there's, there's layers to that. And it would come down to what, what if you can get Patrick Kane, huh, he would fit in well. You'd but find a hole it, for him. Yeah, yeah it's, <laughs> it's the what player are you talking about? Yeah. If, if not Pelche, then who on, on that on that second line? And what's the cost? I mean, I, I'm kind of with you. You can find players that are better than Jacob Pelche, but what is the cost? What does this season look like? I I have a hard time saying that you sh- that you should be going out and spending assets right now. We've seen Ruzichka could play. I haven't liked him as much as a fourth liner as I yeah. did as a top six guy. He was better up there. Um, and Richie is what Richie is. I'd you. You got plenty of depth. If those are your 13th or 14th guys, and this is why I'm buying the buy or sell yeah. for Derek Newman of Newman Dean's real estate group. Like, there isn't a line where you're like, ah, there's a hole here. And there were lines like that. The fourth line without Dewar was a little flat for my liking. Yeah, it's big and heavy, but God, you'd, you'd like a little more pace. Well, boom, there's Walker Dewar. And that second line before you had Pelche, you're like, Cadre and Huberto next to each other. That makes sense. But Luch just, that he's cast wrong there. Finally, you have a guy cast with Jacob Pelche's skill set fits with those guys. There just isn't a glaring hole anymore. That doesn't mean they're the most dynamic four group in the league, but there just isn't a glaring hole. So like, I, I think it's a, it's, it's a buy for me. You know, you know, if someone wants to give Brock Besser at half price, well, that's sure. Yeah, but, yeah. Right. You can go get Timo Meyer, but what is, what is yeah. the cost? There are, there are some forwards. I just think we're for this team right now. And maybe J- Jacob Pelche goes on a 10 game pointless streak and you're kicking yourself, but I would think if if there's anything to improve to add, it would be on the back end. Yep. And now, can you if you, what was uh, Frank saying on the show today about how last year the Carolina Hurricanes go out and yep. get Max Domi for, for a, a sixth, sixth rounder? rounder. Yep. I sign me up. Not I to say that's... not to say Max Domi this year, but if there's a player of that yep. ilk, sure. And that's the type of shopping Brad Trillery is going to be doing because I just think you can't invest a first a second even a third next year they don't have their third this year you're just squinting you're like geez like they've sent a lot of futures out the door when you look at the deal for Toffoli for Yarn Crow some of the other ads they've made over the past few years like they need to sort of restock a bit and that doesn't mean that it's rebuild it just means if you are going to shed one of those assets like you got to be more than a bubble team and they're just not right now so if you can find if, if the market falls out on a team like I'm selling I want this D to move for a fourth and no one bites in a minute before the deadline. Trillery's like, take a six. Like, sure, go upgrade your third pair. But more than that, just feels like uh, that, you know, all for what? They still might miss, right? And before we close the book on buy it or sell it, some people on the chat chiming in about Dennis Gilbert. There's a lot to like about him, too, as a depth guy. Yep. He's stepped right in and hasn't looked uh, hasn't looked out of place. What would Daryl and Brad tell you about having too many D in the playoffs. Yeah, no such thing. Right? Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised if they added, like, the defensive version of Ryan Carpenter, a guy that you bring in for really cheap that might not even play. But yeah. in the case that you get into a run and you lose two, three, four defensemen, like we see all the time, I mean, remember the 4 run? They were down to, you know, 31 oh, yeah. seconds yeah. for Brennan Evans. Like, it, you can't have enough guys that can step in and give you – 12 minutes in an emergency so what, if man. they could get one of those i'm fine with that and stone you know he's he's 10 days retroactive ir from saturday so he's out for another week like that probably gets you right around to the deadline now within days of it one more d wouldn't be the worst and no. if they don't i also get it because gilbert's giving you more than you could have expected it's buy it or sell it presented by derek newman of newman dean's real estate group with cir realty buying or selling let derek do the work for you email D Newman at CIRrealty.ca or call 403-619-661. Very tall. I love the boy. Very tall, tucks his pants, his shirts into his pants, it's and all that golfer. sort of thing. He said, oh, of course he is. Fire six seven yeah, can't correct. ask us. Of course he is. Nah, he's very, very good guy. Boring. Not only good at, at good guy, but good at what he does. Right. Take uh, take our word on it. I wanted to mention Tyler to Foley. Yep. And it's not even quiet anymore. It's 30 points in 25 games. Jeez. When he came in last year, I don't know what the expectation was. You thought he was a guy that gets 20, 20 goals. right hand. This is the guy right-handed shot. You wanted a scorer. And then as the season went along, he really struggled. 
He scored, yeah. remember, he scored right off the bat that one crazy goal where he's coming across the top of the crease and he's kind of off balance and, and tucks it in. The crowd goes crazy. But then as the season went along and into the playoffs, he really struggled. He's he's not alone because Backlund's been very good, but for a team that's got some warts and some holes in its game, Tyler Toffoli has been consistent. And if the other, like anything else, if everything else can kind of round itself into shape, but Toffoli's been terrific. If you had to give a grade for forwards, I think he and Backlund are top of the pile. They've been very consistent. They haven't gone through long spells where they look lost. And like it's the guys around them that always seem to play better. Wherever you put those guys, results seem to follow. And like he's on pace to have a monster year. He's got one year left. Um, he's exactly what you wanted. And last year, I think the fit just didn't make sense because you didn't have a playmaking center with him. You had Elias Lindholm, and no one was going to – usurp the wing minutes from Gaudreau or Kachuk. You'd understand that. And then after that, who did you have at center? You had Yarncroke, you had Backlund. Like, those aren't playmaking centers. So now you're playing with Lindholm, a guy that can get you the puck. I'm not surprised that a finisher is scoring more next to a playmaking center, and that feels like a slight on Backlund, but you just – you don't shade – to Foley to heavy defensive minutes. And you yeah. do for Backlund's line. It just didn't seem to fit when those two were together. And to Foley proved to us this year that despite whatever concerns there may have been over the off season and the boots aren't great, like he's still an elite finisher. Daryl said that last year. He's one yeah. of the guys that just can straight finish. It's a rare skill in this league. It is. I was going to say it. He's one of the guys on this team right now that isn't afraid to shoot it. And don't you want more of those guys? How many times have we watched games in the last two months Shoot it, yeah, which is just, just shoot the puck for sure. Get it on net, and, and Huber go. I know we'll probably talk yes. about him. He's missed the net, but he, even he's starting to shoot a little more, a little bit more. But to Foley is that sh- shot first mentality, and you know, coaches probably from the time he was in PU even saying shoot the puck, shoot the puck, and he can shoot it. There was that one you'll remember. I think it was in the second period. Not a great angle, yeah. but Vimelka it it handcuffed him and it fell Falls, down. Yeah. It was from a terrible angle, but he can get that thing off in yeah. in a hurry and hard, and just keep just keep shooting, kid. The on pace for career high, it's a little misleading. He played fifty two games mm-hmm. that shortened season and scored twenty eight. So I'm trying to do the pro rating. That's that's yeah. a lot of math on my brain, but but I feel like that's that's the Montreal year. Correct. The yeah. shortened year where they only played seventy some games, but uh, scored uh, scored a bit in the playoffs, as I recall. A ton, yeah, and it's so so. You've seen twenty eight, but really, if you prorate it, that kind of feels like a thirty five to forty goal season. I, I, he feels like a lock for thirty at this point, and yeah. that would be the just by counting the highest number of goals he's had in a season. And that's not a bad time to have Tyler Toffoli for the Calgary Flames. He signed that deal at maybe the off season where there was the greatest uncertainty about where's the money, will there be fans back, who's got the dough, what are we doing with the cap. It's a steal. You don't get 30 goal potential guys for four and a quarter. It's just like like if he's a free agent today, he's probably a seven, eight million dollar player. Yeah. Like you can flirt with 35. That's kind of the going rate, isn't it? And we've talked about it too. Who is in that room that I can stand up to Daryl? But who who would have the team's voice? Who would be a guy who would have Daryl's ear? We don't talk about Toffoli very often, but yeah. I bet you he's one of those guys. Yeah, and he's got the same – he's in the same jewelry club as yeah. Darrow, which carries a lot of weight. We know that. Um, yeah, I, I think there's a lot of respect that Daryl has for those guys that he's won with, and it can only help his influence. Now, Daryl's a stubborn cat. Daryl's going to do things Daryl's way, but I, I think he'd, he's also a smart guy. He, he'd understand when he's getting cues from enough people that have reached the pinnacle. Yeah that, okay, maybe it is time to give the boys a day off rather than, you know, bring them into the room and tell them how, how much they suck at hockey again. <laughs> what have you made a Huber, though? Um, that line's been there, the one I'm waiting for. I mean, I like Pelche tonight, but both those goals are on the power play. Yeah. Um, Caudry's, you're seeing the penalties a bunch. You're also seeing the nice play here there. But too many turnovers from that group. And – you can see the creativity. Like it feels like it's close at times. And then also there's still just that, man, you got to win that puck battle. Or, you know, you can't turn it over there. It's been a lot better, but yeah. it's still nowhere near second in league scoring 115 point Jonathan Huberto. I mean, I think you'd be thrilled if you got 0.9 points per game the rest of the way. And, and that's better than what he's been doing lately. There's more there. It's so tantalizing, right? When you yeah. think, when you've watched this team for 50 some odd games, and you've seen what the goaltending is and the special teams and all of that. 
And that has been with a, a, he's, he is a superstar player. He has proven to be a superstar in the league yeah. with middling numbers. If, if you just, just get, the, it was the same thing we said with Man Japan. You just kind of get back to where Yourself. you were. Let, let's, we're not even going to talk about season ending numbers. Yeah. Because they're going to be disappointing. They're not going to stack up. But between now and game 82, what can you be? Can you be some form? some semblance of the player that you have been in your career it would make all of the difference because this team somehow has tread water and they're in that spot i just wonder is there any way that this guy can find a way yeah. to break through and i don't think it's alan walsh tweeting or anything else but i just wonder if if there's something there and we you talk we talked about it on the show the last few the last few days you need something to happen for this team to break through and sometimes for teams, a coach gets fired or a guy gets traded out or a guy gets traded in or whatever Somebody it is. Somebody gets hurt. You got to rally around it. Yeah. 14, 15 group of Geo when he goes down. I want it. 13 guys getting a point in Arizona. They're down 3 1. Why not? I, right? I don't think that's nothing. Now, I, I would have said that Rasmus getting hurt in Detroit could be a big swing point. Nothing happened. The Truba yeah. thing, you're like, oh, they were great. And then they come out listless the next game, like three of the next four or two of the next three. So we're waiting for these things, but it could be tonight, certainly. And if you want to talk about guys getting back to themselves, if you could get Huberto to 75% of where he was yeah. and get goaltending to 75% of where it was last year, I mean, a lot of the problems with this team just aren't there anymore because they're playing one goal games all the time. Well, and it's that. And so it's one more goal from a Huberto line, and it's one more save from one of these netminders. And all of a sudden, these overtime games, like, no, no, we, we, we iced it with empty netter. We're good. Because we've had no problem with the back of the line. That back of no. the line has been terrific all Top year. The line's been fine. And Mandrapani is rounded into form. To Foley, we've talked about him already. If you can start to get more out of Huberto. Yep. And I, I wonder now for. For Dan Vladar, he improves to 12, 6, and 4. His last 16 games, he is 11, 2, and 3. Question I have is who goes tomorrow? It's a back to back. Very little in the way of travel. Dan Very Vladar. in the way of work tonight as well. Dan Vladar <laughs> basically had a night off. He's worked harder yeah. in practice. Now, I will say this if he faced, uh, what were the final shot totals? They got uh, 13, 14, 14, 51, 14. Season you know, high for the Flames there, for shots. There's probably, and probably season low for what they allowed. Uh, like that's that's a really good for and against yeah. total. You, you lose this game somehow, you're pulling your hair out. I still think there was four or five tough saves, but yeah, I don't think it's a night where it's like, Jesus, gear weighs 80 pounds, it's full of sweat. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You could use them if you want to. We've been. Uh, I know what my ad. Yes, you put them back in. Yeah. Okay. You, it's 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 beyond to me. It's beyond the what's Markstrom thinking. Yeah. What do you need to do for the, get some bloody wins? Mm -hmm. Get on a roll. You got Boston and Toronto coming up. You got yep. Colorado. You got some tough bloody Two games with Minnesota, coming up. Loom large as you get into March, and yeah, like it's Vegas tomorrow. This is a divisional team. This is a building you haven't won in ever. And that's like you could mullet arena was one they hadn't won in. Uh, you know, they played some weird makeshift stadiums, but every other building in the league that's a regular home, they've now won it. Um, yeah, like I, I think you view it as three games and four nights. I don't know that you'd put Vladar in for all three, maybe not. So maybe you're sort of thinking if I'm in a spot one here, one there, what works better, but I'm kind of with you. Like, you can throw the style points out the window at this point. Who's getting results? Who's hanging two points? Let's go. And what it, generally when you see, because we talked about St. Louis and how they were near the bottom or at the bottom of the league, and then they got hot and they go all the way to the cup yeah. final and they win. What was a big part of that? Getting a goalie yeah. and having him go on an unbelievable run. Vladar has not played a lot of hockey this season. No. Why not? And the only way you can let a guy go on a run and get is if you put him back in the net. It's true. I mean, I, he's in my mind, there's no way he doesn't get one of the next two. I, I, I'm almost ready for them to say, go. Like, you win in Vegas, just keep going. Yeah. And and no, Vladar wasn't outstanding tonight. Well, he, was, he did not look good on that, there and, on that Tana goal. No. I really thought he didn't play Tana well. <laughs> it's on almost shot. like he didn't think Tana was going to shoot it there, which is. Yeah, he was past, just, past first guy. Eh? Yeah, well, and it's like he's right there. Like, that's yeah. his high scoring shot. Like, yeah. shouldn't you be. Oh, right. Okay. I see what he did there. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't spectacular, but there's still some big saves in there. Like, we laughed about it. Three shots in the first two were high danger. 
<laughs> a post from Kraus in tight, and then I, I think you had another one in, on a partial break. You're like, yeah, you had to be sharp. Like, yeah. There's no easing your way in, feel the puck for 15 minutes, getting warm with this Flames group. They just don't allow those. And Adam's chiming in. You know, it wasn't even that hard of a shot by Tanev. He really just kind of tucked it Bit in. Bit of a there. muff? Yeah. 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 Usually his lateral movement is he's a little more cat-like <laughs> in the net. But a little surprise. It is that end of the rink where Tanev's yeah. very dangerous. It's really. It's yeah, he's good. really good there. I, I'm very aware that if they lose this game, this show sounds a lot different. And it sounds like, and I, you can see the comments, and I'm sure fans are giddy. They're ex- it's a big night. Now, do you have to beat Vegas for this to mean something? How does it work now? As you, they get on the plane, short flight to, to Vegas, have some beers, get in the hotel, go to sleep, game day tomorrow. Yep. What does t- what this this game mean well, if they get their doors blown off, or even if, if they lose tomorrow? I view it as the road trip. So they got two of a possible six. There's four left on the table. Would you be okay with four or six? Yes, you would. Um, it might not move you up in the standings would be the issue. If you could find a way to get three of the next four points, that'd be really impressive. You come back with five or six. Uh, and what's not acceptable is I know these are two good teams. They're two teams better than you in the standings. If you look at them, you can't lose both these in regulation. It, it, it'll feel like a nail in the coffin. Maybe not the last, but certainly a nail if they get zero of the next possible four points. So so to me, it's like two out of four points, we'll live with it uh, if you're if you're grading. And three is like, that's that's an A+. Plus. That's a hell of a road trip. you got the defending Stanley Cup champs who aren't healthy but are still incredibly dangerous. And you've got a Vegas team that isn't quite healthy but seems to be piling up wins. They just got Laurent Brassois back who might end up being their number one goalie if they get to the playoffs. I mean, when they get there, it's not – these aren't – Soft touches here. I wonder about Vegas because they lost Logan Thompson. Yeah. And Mark Stone, he is really kind of the heartbeat of that team. Agreed. And then you, you take him out, you take your goaltender out. How how many blows can you take before it starts to affect your, the results? They're 5 2 and 3 in their last 10. They lost in overtime uh, in their last game. I got bad news for you. <laughs> Stone's done for the year. Yeah. You know what that does? Well, yeah. That, all that money goes on to LTIR, and they can well, now bring in a Timo Meyer. Well, I mean, yeah, you can go back in the playoffs. Like, we've seen this routine before. Yeah. Remember, Kucherov just stay down, right? I, like, I, I feel like this one's legit, though. Oh, I don't, and I'm not suggesting it yeah. isn't. I'm just saying, like, knowing Vegas, they're just going to go bring in an $8 million guy. <laughs> like, wouldn't they go get Timo Meyer if you just looked at their history? Like, it's. I'll tell you what, though. Yeah. Is there a better gig than Mark Stone, where back to back years they're like, just go home and sit? Here's your nine or ten million yeah, or whatever he's yeah. making, and you don't need to play, and we'll see you come spring. But no, it's you know those back issues. I, I don't. Well, think it's that that's... surgery. We're not joking about that. Yeah. I think it's legit. But what I'm really talking about is that now gives them the cap space to go at. Oh, like for if sure. They it can does. find the assets to get a Timo Meyer. Mm. Why wouldn't they? Like we know that owner wants to win. Not today. Yesterday. Like he ain't patient. Since day one, it's been about win, 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 right out of the gate. Uh, and and would, would it be surprising to see Kelly McCrimmon push chips in and go get a star? Absolutely not. They just have more cap space to use now. Just look at the goals for. That'll help their differential tonight. Yeah, three Flames there. in Vegas, 186 in the goals for category. Same same? Yeah. That's what you're saying? It's surprising. It is a little surprising. But again, you know, throw six on the board. That'll help seven against Buffalo, well, six know, here. You know what we said at, at the beginning of the year? If the Flames can get the kind of goaltending that uh, Vegas is going to get from Logan Thompson, right, yeah. I mean, they'll be neck and neck. It's just, you know, the Logan Thompson's Logan Thompson. Fucking goalies. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's the Undertaker meme, right? Uh, just back from the dead. That said, they got to go into a tough building. The uh, Golden Knights, 17 and 13 at home. Okay. Just okay, right? You, yeah. You'd expect I mean, maybe more there. But. They're not as deep as we've seen in years past. They got Paul Cotter playing on their top line with Jack Eichel and Jonathan Marsh. So Michael Amadeo's on the second line. Like it's, they're missing guys. It's not peak Vegas, but it, it really hasn't mattered. Like no, you look at I that mean, team in the first season, it wasn't stars. I mean, it was kind of the coming out party for Carlson and Marsh show and company, but like you just need to win. I don't care if it's ugly, pretty, like, Go get it. Take some momentum here. You out shit, uh, out chance the shit out of Philly on Monday. 
You can't get saves, and their goalie's on his head. You beat a Rangers club on Saturday. Stick with the process. The process has been good for three games in a row here. Mm -hmm. I know people don't want to hear that when you lose to Philly, but I'm sorry. It's the type of effort that gets you wins 80% of the time in this league if you're going to pile up the quality and caliber of chances. They had two breakaways they didn't score, 2 0 they didn't score. Erson makes all kinds of great saves in the first period. It's just something that's unsustainable. Eventually, they're going to go in. And even tonight, it was the same. Eventually, these pucks are going to go in, and they did. It was one goal halfway through the game, and they end up with six. You more harshly cr criticize and critique those types of games when you feel like you can't afford yes. to have those losses. And I that's think that's totally where fair. Flames fans feel right now. That's if fair. you're in game 20, you're 30, and you outshoot the opponent, and you're, you're, you're just clearly better. You're the yep. better team, but you lose by you lose 4-3 to three or 3-2. Yeah, to two. It's like, oh, okay, play again in two days. But because of where it's at right now, yep. that flyer game, it's a kick in the nuts. Yeah. And you're not wrong because they were good against the Rangers. They were very good, good enough to win against Philadelphia, and yeah. obviously good enough tonight. And what it is is if you're first in the division with a cushion, you just shrug and say that's hockey. Yeah. Because you're in the bubble and because Minnesota happened to get a win, I think the same day, it just feels like, oh, like that's I can feel this in my chest. Someone just stab me. Like it's they those ones hurt. And if they want to keep the playing well against higher ranking opponents, yep. you know, playing up to the level, then by all means, go ahead and do that. They got the too. schedule for it the next two weeks. Don't <laughs> do they? they ever? Yeah. I mean, for a team that loves playing playoff teams, wow, the Flames must be thrilled. Division leader, defending Stanley Cup champion, Toronto's fourth place in the league, Boston's first in the league. Minnesota, I'm telling you, twice in four nights coming up in March. That feels like a monster Two game and four night. They, they play Dallas in the middle. The second Minnesota game is the second half of a back to back on the road. But those loom large. Anything else from this game? It it is one of those ones where you almost again this this could have been a loss. The the one thing that I will give them credit for, and and you forget that this was a nine game point streak for Arizona. They had beaten some very good teams. Their home record is very good. And the Flames are not going to thumb their nose at anybody right now. But it is a lopsided win, and it's one in a row. So, I got one more for you. Are you getting Are you getting ahead of yourself? Uh, maybe, but it does feel like a loss if if you would have found a way to outshoot your opponent four to one Ugh. and lose. Uh, one final thought on this one. Yeah. Shame on us for not being there. How yeah. fun does that rink look? And I know that like it's. You can make the jokes, the NHL, you know, you're a big league, okay? nice 4,600-seat arena, and hey, the college team's logos at center ice, and revenue is horrible, and this is why the cap's not going up. There's lots of reasons to get outraged and why this sucks. The one thing that doesn't suck is the fan experience. Talking to people that are down there tonight and seeing the visuals, like it, I, I think it would kick ass to go to one of these games. It isn't a long-term thing. I remember the Chargers played in a 24,000-seat arena while they were building SoFi in L.A., and it was like, this is a unique opportunity. It's not, there, there's a two to three year window here beyond this season where you can go see an NHL game with less than 5,000 people and be that close. Do it. Oh, man. Should have been there. Should have been there. And uh, a little chilly outside. Not to be there. In, to be in Arizona at this time. And it's, you know, it's shitty plan. Uh, I do I have blame good news. Brett. Yeah. Uh, March 14. Yeah. All right. Just say March 14. But I think the big story, uh, you talk about Foley, the kids, Walker Door, the whole thing. Afterburner curse <laughs> is over. Our third win of the season coming at the hands of a uh, at the Arizona Coyotes, who fall 6 3 to the Calgary Flames. And it's honestly like you want to start putting up things on the mantle, you know, like hunters love the big yeah. taxidermy. I mean, there's. There's the Blue Jackets. There's the Blues. There's the Coyotes. Yeah, so it's a That's a collection who. right there. Yeah. That's a big game hunting. Yeah. Yeah, see, I wish you wouldn't have brought that up. That's not as good after you mention all of that. Okay. That is Afterburner, our uh, cheers of the game. It was a, a sweep. Yeah. A two-banger for Walker. <laughs> Goal and an assist. Sioux Falls, South Dakota. You ever been? You ever want to see? I, I feel like I, I'd like to be. I in, want to uh, go to a Musketeers game. I feel like it's probably a right? Sioux Falls Musketeer. Uh, right? They won the league last year. Go uh, get them. Taking some walk to her. And uh, buy it or sell it. We're we're saying just pump the brakes right now. Walker looks good and deep. 
you're going to be spending assets on on a winger. Let Pelche at least prove that he's not the guy. Give him an opportunity. I know we're four games left, but still, it just does not seem uh, prudent. prudent at this juncture. And, dude, honestly, like I think you need a crane to get Walker Duro out of the lineup at this point. He is just, you notice him every shift, it feels like. It's a good-looking forward group all of a sudden. And I don't think he needs to win over the coach. No. Pelche, I think, had to. I don't think Walker Duro has to. No, he did it the right way. Yeah. Did it the right way. He yeah, wasn't went undrafted and worked his Four way years through. Four years of college. Yeah. yeah. Did it the right way. Yeah. That's how Walker Duro does it. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it. These are fun when we win. Yeah, it's a little different. Well, I, maybe it's the green. Yeah. Maybe it's the beautiful Yeah, maybe it's eagle. being at the, uh, at the casino. Having There's, pictures of beer before the show. There is a good little vibe here. Like we said at Super Bowl, you get sports fans in one place and $12 pictures. There's a vibe. So next time we're here, we'll let you know. You join us. Yeah. Tomorrow, barn burner from right here at the Gray Eagle Resort and Casino. And it'll be a game day. Going to need you to get that helmet on. Yeah. I, I, a winning helmet would be the first they've worn in Vegas. Let's see that one. There you go. Flames win it by a score of 6-3 over the Arizona Coyotes. One in a row. Make it two against Vegas coming up on Thursday night for, uh, for Pinder and Spoomer. See you, buddies.